Today we're playing Pokemon Odyssey, which is basically a dungeon crawler story-driven Pokemon game. You'll be playing as Nyx, who is a young adventurer that wants to take on the Yggdrasil Labyrinth, a gigantic maze at the base of the biggest tree you'll ever see that has attracted many adventurers in the past. There's all kinds of trainers that try to take this on from people that just want money or fame or just want to take it on to test their skills. With all of that in mind, what can really go wrong on this adventure? So let's check out Pokemon Odyssey ourselves, but since the game has a wonder trading feature, we'll be playing through it with only wonder traded Pokemon. On top of that, it also has regional forms and a mission system, but also a variety of great characters that you'll be meeting on your journey. Before we jump into it, let me know what the best Pokemon you've ever gotten from wonder trade is, because I would love to know. And while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Odyssey. The game starts you off with some lore about the Yggdrasil, which is also known as the World Tree. Kind of reminds me of Elden Ring a bit. Underneath it is a labyrinth dug by the roots of it over the millennia. What lies underneath it and what do you want to achieve once you get there? All those questions is why this tree is so popular and why so many people come to try and take it on. And one of these people is a young girl named Nyx and we'll be going over her story today. On the first day, her trusty partner Pokemon Plusle and Minan wake her up. They seem to be worried about something as she is grabbing all the supplies she needs to go on a journey of some kind. She is currently living on the island of Fibernia. Unfortunately, she is unable to find the item that she is looking for right now, but then her big sister Amy comes along and helps her out. She was looking for the Pokeballs of Plusle and Minan, and they were in the top drawer all along. Just like when I ask my mom for something and it's not there, but when she looks, it all of a sudden just appears out of nowhere. Amy is also an expert explorer from the Adventurers Guild, which is located on the island of Talrega, and this is also where we're heading right now for Nyx's very first day. After putting Plusla and Minan in their Pokeballs, we head over to the nearby forest to capture our Nyx team member, Lotad, who doesn't love a little Mirror B reference, although we're going to have to trade the little guy away, sadly enough. They also gave an entire new look to the Pokemon centers, and there is no Nerd's Joy anymore. Now we have the beautiful guild lady instead. I know Brock will be missing her, but this is a nice change of pace. If you decide to check out the market, you can see that potions have been renamed to Medica, and escape robes are now Ariana Grande threats. Once we're done stocking up on items, we take the boat to Talrega, and we see that there is a big dock there. Unfortunately, most boats here are off limits for me, so we head to the nearby cave where we see our very first regional form, and that's Krabby. Once we add it to our temporary team until we unlock wonder trading, we go outside and a weird guy bumps us out of the way and after this a purple haired girl starts talking to me too. I ask her who they are but she answers me in this weird robotic like voice almost like she isn't human and says according to my calculations time for interaction is missing. I am due elsewhere. Salutations. We have a bad feeling about these two but there's nothing we can do right now so we head further on and reach the Krabby Club. In here there's a lot of people that need your help so you can go and accept their quests and turn them in for rewards if you have some free time. After accepting all the quests, we head over to Talrega and run into the same two people once more who are talking to my sister. She introduces me to them as Olympia and Ethan. They will be my exploration partners, so we're going to have to try and get along with them. Considering one of them just assaulted me, this might be a problem in the future, but we'll have to wait and see. A weird man with a hat shows up. His name is Frey and he is Amy's exploration partner. They'll be going on an exploration to the lowest part of the Yggdrasil as a new discovery was made there and they have to check it out, so they'll be gone for a couple of days. Once they leave, Ethan apologizes to me for earlier, and we also found out that Olympia is indeed a robot. After this, we head to the guild together because the boss is waiting for us there, and once we arrive, we get briefed. His name is Vizzle, and he's obviously the leader of the guild of Talrega. He's a little bit weird because he talks to himself a couple of times in the conversation, but he also mentions that the best way to make friends is a good fight, so he orders me to fight both Olympia and Ethan, so that we can become more acquainted with each other. For 
First up was Olympia with her Mawile and Porygon. I do like that she has a Porygon because this really shows her robotic side more and it's incredibly easy for Biddy and Bonnie to make her circuit malfunction with a couple of electric shocks. Our next opponent will be Ethan with his Shroomish and Kecleon. Two pretty weak Pokemon, so we target the strongest one Kecleon first. After taking it down with Thunder Shocks, we then tackle the Shroomish out of here too and come out on top as the strongest one of this team. As a reward, Vizzle gives me the Explorer Kit, which are just some basic materials to start you off on your journey. But we can't head into the Labyrinth yet, first we have to do a favor for Vizzle. We have to bring a professor and his assistant back here without any problems. They should be on our home island, so we should be able to find them pretty quickly. Before we start this mission, however, we go to this guild lady here who can take your Pokemon in for Wonder Trades. I trade away everything I have for a regional form of Smoochum, which is now a water type, and it now resembles a Mer. Made. The second Pokemon I got was a Tyroke, literally the most useless thing ever because it only gets Tackle. And our third new team member is an Elekid, one of my favorite electric types once it evolves into Electivire, so I will definitely take the plug head. We go back to the dogs and take a boat back to the mainland, and the first person we see in the town is actually him. His name is Renek, but the reason that he's late to the meeting is because his assistant's bag has been stolen by thieves, so we have to go and get it back before he can come with us. Me and the gang find an abandoned lab a little bit further up and this seems like a perfect place for a thief to go and shelter after stealing something. Once we enter we immediately hear screams and they're probably from the person that we're looking for. They might be in grave danger so what do we do? Instead of zooming right to them we first check out the local wildlife, capture them and defeat a couple of regular thieves with new regional variants of Rattata. This time they're not fat however like in the Alola region. And because every new area we discover is going to give us a new encounter we decide to go back to the wonder trading lady before we save the professor's assistant. Now that's what I call a real hero. As our new Pokemon, we get an Abra, Togepi, and Pikachu. At least two of them will be useful, except for Togepi. The only thing that can do is have the most memorable cry of the entire anime. So we eat the egg in a pan, scramble it up, and go back to the abandoned lab where we meet up with the thieves immediately. However, they have a boss that looks like a real thug and has a very peculiar accent as he says You don't get it. I walk all we barnacles like ye. You be in the prisons or brody in ye shan't be. I'm sorry, I have no idea what this guy's saying, so I'm just going to slap his bald head. Then Olympia goes on to end his entire life with the best burns you'll ever see, and then he gets really mad and starts attacking the three of us. With the power of Smooch, Tyrogue, and Elekid, we can take out the first Pokemon Grimer. They were, however, a little bit annoying because they were able to poison me and disable a couple of my moves. They bring in Sneasel, so I Thundershock and Water Gun it, but then I realize that Ice types seem to now resist Water type moves, which is a pretty cool addition to this game. Maybe if Pokemon did this in real life, the Ice type might actually be useful. I then swap out both of my Pokemon because they've once again been disabled and bring in Pikachu and Togepi. They keep disabling my best moves, so I have to keep swapping out my Pokemon until we eventually take out the Sneasel and Venonat without many casualties. A very annoying battle, but we managed to defeat the bald man. And then we ask where the professor's assistant is, but they don't seem to know either because they're looking for her as well. She blasts a hole through the wall with her Gyarados and says that no evildoer could ever possibly defeat her her, the mighty Annette. After introductions, we say that the professor is required of her assistance back at the port, so she heads off and we go back to tell Rega as well. We meet up with Vizzle and the professor straight away, but they are going off to the first level of the Yggdrasil. We can actually go in ourselves too, but Vizzle decides to give us an explanation first because there is 8th stratums, which are basically 8th levels to the labyrinth. Once you get to the end of a level, you have to beat a boss in order to get access to the next one, so they kind of work like gym leaders. If you can't defeat them, there is no going to the next level for you, so you better be on your A-game. Vizzle wishes us luck, and me, Ethan, and Olympia decide to do a race to whoever can beat the first captain the quickest. They both get a head start on me, but eventually we do also enter the first stratum and run into an FOE, which reminds me a lot of Persona Q2, where there's also FOEs. These are basically boss-like creatures that you can't capture, and also have to try and actively avoid because they will otherwise kill your entire team. The first one I ran into was a Sandler that totally obliterated me, so after I knew this, I activated my 99 sneak I got out of Skyrim and dungeon crawled my way through this level. It's filled with trainers and wild Pokemon, so naturally I grabbed another 
starter Pokemon here and traded it away for a stupid Illumise, who's now a Bug Psychic type, so it might actually be useful compared to a regular one. Its design, however, stays trash. Speaking of Psychic types, my Abra evolved into a Kadabra to make my team even more overpowered. With these new additions, I was easily able to reach the end of the Stratton. Unfortunately, both of our team members have already arrived, so we're last in this race at the moment. Fortunately for us, the captain has not been found yet, and just when that happens, somebody steps out of their tent, and luckily for us, it turns out to be the captain, and her name is Karen. She's a little bit grumpy because we woke her up, but she's always ready for a fight, and in order to find out who's going to fight her first, me and the squad end up going for rock, paper, scissors. Real chads always go for rock, so we end up winning, which means we can take on cowgirl Karen. She starts off with two grass types, the Lombre and Lily. I lead with Kadabra and Elekid, and after the Lombre fakes me out, it immediately gets static, so Kadabra can take it out with two side beams straight after. Volbeat comes in, I try to hit it with a side beam and then a shockwave, but it seems to have lightning rod, so instead of hitting it, I boost its special attack. This is a really cool ability for Volbeat because it is based of a Firefly, so they give light themselves. It also managed to confuse me, so my Kadabra goes down because it hits itself in its confusion and gets hit with a Fury Cutter and an Ancient Power to turn after. I bring in my own Illumise, and as I hit a Fury Cutter and a quick attack, the Volbeat heals up with Moonlight. So I start focusing the Lilip until that goes down with Fury Cutters and quick attacks too, and then she brings out an Illumise of her own. Just one quick attack and Fury Cutter, and that thing goes down quickly, so it's only Volbeat remaining, and because Fury Cutter's powers has been built up so much right now, we can just slice it in half with one more and win our first Stratton boss battle. She says that I'm crazy strong, but she expected nothing else from Amy's little sister. Ethan and Olympia are up next, and they also defeat her without many problems, which means we can now enter the second level. We group up and congratulate each other for winning our first battle, but then an earthquake happens from very deep in the Yggdrasil. However, with caution, we still proceed and head to the base of the world tree. Another earthquake happens, and we're wondering what's actually going on in the depths of this world tree here. That's when we cut to the POV of my sister, as she is exploring it with Frey. They found a temple all the way at the bottom, and my sister says that they have to report this back to the guild. But Frey has different plans, as he presses a button which opens up the door here. He says, Thank you, Amy, for bringing me here, but I don't need you anymore. Amy knew all along that it was a mole, but she never expected it to be Frey. She tries to stop him by throwing out her Blaziken, but it's too late. They then go to talk about a prince which should be in Amy's pocket, but she seems to have dropped it somewhere. I have no idea what they're talking about, but this makes Trey incredibly mad, and the final words of my sister are... Nix, I'm sorry to leave you such a big responsibility, but I know you can do it. I believe in you. And that's when Trey kills her in cold blood. Frey then shouts, Brothers, it's time to get out of this prison and claim our victory over the Yggdras. Not knowing of anything that just happened, the gameplay cuts back to us, as we can finally enter the world tree. In here, we capture another Pokemon, but we also find out that the second stratum is actually a desert. It's really cool that there lies a desert underneath all of these roots, and I'm very much wondering what the other levels will be like. But before we uncover those mysteries, we get interrupted by a thief from earlier. And after he bumped into Ethan, he seems to have stolen his medallion, so we have to go after him to get it back. But first, we do another wonder trade. This time we get the least popular Pokemon of all time, Charmander. And if you decide to head back to the guild, you can now just teleport to the Stratum that you last visited, which is a nice little feature. And I guess it also replaces the Fly HM. Inside of the desert, we find a cave where we capture another Pokemon and run into a trainer with a regional form of Sandshrew. No idea what typing it is, but I'm kinda liking it. However, it's not as good as the Alolan Sandshrew, I just love that little igloo boy. We get our ass whooped by a trainer because there's not really any Pokemon centers around yet, so we once again get sent back to the guild and do some more wonder trades. We get a Chikorita now, which is just a stupid potato with legs, and the cutest little balls feel. We evolve our Chikorita into Bayleaf straight after and also get Charmeleon. We run into our second FOE inside this cave as well, a level 38 Steelix, only this time we actually managed to defeat it because as we all know, Steelix is really slow and its special defense just sucks. We get out of the cave and run into Ethan and Olympia again, but they have lost the thief. That's when we run into another adventurer named Kit. She's a fellow adventurer and might know more about the thief, so she tells me to come to her base camp where somebody might be able to help us out. Even though we don't fully trust her, we have no other leads, so we follow her back to her camp where she says 
that the gang that stole from us is called the Desert Bandits and that they've probably returned to their base. The boss of this gang is Brody, which is the bald guy that we defeated earlier, so it must be the same people that stole from the assistant. She explains to me where their hideout is, but on the way there, there is an FOE that we have to watch out for, which turned out to be the regional form of Sandslash, who spanked my butt once again. Before we found their hideout, however, we ended up running into an old Amber in the deepest parts of a cave. And once you talk to it, two FOEs attack you, an Armaldo and a Cradley. And considering they're level 40, I am absolutely absolutely not ready to take them on yet, but this old amber is actually just needed for a quest, so absolutely not necessary for us to get at all. So let's let the fossils of the past sleep. As I was fighting some of the desert trainers, we ran into a regional form of Ponita as well. Not sure what typing it is, but I feel like it might still be a fire type mixed in with a dark type? I like it, I definitely ride this horse through hell and back. We reach the foot of a mountain with a weird door in it, so this must be the thieves hideout. We end up knocking on the door but they ask for a pass where and obviously we don't know it. After trying to guess it with Apercadabra and Bald, it doesn't end up working out, but that's when another member of their guild starts running away from us, so we chase after him and find him all the way at the end of a cave. We defeat him in a Pokemon battle, and we promise to let him go if he gives me the password, which turns out to be yes, not Chansey. A weird password, but this guy is going to go get some milk, so I guess his days at the guild are numbered. But before we get into it, let's take a look at today's sponsor, Exter. You know that moment when you're at the store counter and you're trying to pay, but you can't find the right card because your wallet is full of trash? Well, if you decide to buy an Exter smart wallet, then that's not going to happen to you anymore. They have a system where if you just press a single teeny tiny button, all the cards will pop out. And you can easily grab the one that you need. They have different designs depending on what style you like. You can go metallic, you can go leather, but it honestly doesn't matter what material you go for because they all feel very premium. And if you're clumsy like me, you might end up losing your wallet. Well, not anymore because now it comes with a tracker card, so you can find it even in the most obscure places. The tracker works on solar power and lasts you about two full months, so you can lose it as much as you want, it'll always return to you. And you can take that to the bank, just like this wallet. If you're interested in buying any of Exter's products, you can click the link in the description or just go to their website and apply code SWIGO for up to 55% off until the end of the year. It might actually make a perfect Christmas gift for someone. Again, a huge thank you to Exter for sponsoring this video. And now, let's head back to the Yggdrasil. We head back to the base, give the password, and safely enter. We then barge through everything in here, we take down all of their members, and end up finding their boss arguing with Olympia. He's calling him a bowling ball, which once again just gets funnier and funnier. I am very much liking the humor in this game, which already gives it a few extra points in my book. Brody recognizes me too, and we tell him that some of his goons stole an item that we need back, but he isn't working with us right now. Instead, he attacks me straight away, as Olympia may him very mad. He started out with a regional form of Maidiena and a Grimer. Kadabra one-shots this Grimer, but Maidiena finishes off Illumis in one hit. So Viper comes in, and together with Maidiena, they take out my Kadabra, my Smoochum, and Pikachu before the Maidiena finally goes down by a fake out. The last Pokemon on his team is going to be Sneasel, and now it is two against two, as I bring in Bayleaf. It doesn't do much, however, as Charmeleon is able to burn up both of his Pokemon with Flame Wheels. With Brody defeated once again, he shouts out ah! and asks why can't he win and that's when Olympia answers maybe because you don't believe in yourself enough and were bullied as a kid or maybe your parents didn't give you enough attention. Man, this robot really hit him in the feels. And after saying that he can do it, he can be a better person, I'm going to be better, I'm going to give people back their stuff that I stole, his personality starts to shift and he actually helps us out instead which is a nice little change of pace. He's going to help us out whenever he can, we just have to give him a call, so I guess this is a nice addition to our friends list. This means we can head back to the base camp and talk to Kid again. We thank her for helping out with all the tips, but she isn't done helping us out at all. Because the second captain also turns out to be her boss, and we have to take him on in order to progress to the third level. So off she goes again, and we follow in her footsteps, but we run into a couple of trainers which cause my Smoochum to level up and evolve into a Jinx. And even though it looks less cursed than the regular Jinx, I still don't want this thing to give me a hug. We then run to Kid 
who's already having a conversation with her brother about us. And he very much resembles Buck from the Sinnoh region. I'm wondering if this might be the third brother, because obviously Flint is also in that line. They notice me and Kit introduces me to her brother whose name is Rocky. And he was an exploration partner of Amy and Frey back in the day before he turned captain. But we have never heard of him, which hurts his feelings a little bit. Ethan and Olympia also show up, but they're going to have to wait in line because we're taking him on first. He leads off at Skarmory and Gligar, so I send out a water pulse from my Jinx and take out that Gligar turn 1. A regional form of Aerodactyl comes in, and I think this is a dragon type, but I'm still not sure. But Pikachu goes ahead and electroshocks Skarmory. The turn after, we take out Skarmory and also water pulse the Aerodactyl. Then he brings out my little bro, Marsh Tom. Unfortunately, the Aerodactyl just goes for a rock slide and takes both of my team members out, so I send out Nana and Yuck to Psy Beam and Signal Beam the Aerodactyl and finish it off. The last Pokemon on his team is Donphan, so I once again Psy Beam and Giga Drain, which leaves it with like 1 HP, but then a high horsepower takes out Kadabra. I bring in Bailey for use two more Giga Drains on both of the Pokemon, and our second boss battle has been defeated. You can really see that we're related to our sister, and then Olympia and Ethan also take him down, but only by a hair. They actually almost lost this time, so they definitely need to step up their game a bit. Just as he's about to grant us access to the third level, another earthquake happens. He says that these earthquakes are normal and that he's going to contact the other captains to see what they can do about it and gather some more information about them. We still have permission to go to the third level, but before we do so, we head back to the guild to do another wonder trade. This time we get a Terdiursa, which we immediately evolve into Ursaring. I mean, it would be really nice if Blood Moon Ursaluna was in this game, but I highly doubt it. We go back on our way and run into two more adventurers, and they say that Trey and Amy's last expedition was a disaster. Trey was brought to the hospital, and Amy seems to have gone missing. Nyx gets really nervous because she wants to know what happened to her sister, so Ethan and Olympia try to calm her down. But it's of no avail because she doesn't even know who these two people are. How do they even know her sister? How can she trust them when she knows nothing about them? Ethan says that her sister ordered them to not say anything to her until they reach the fourth stratum. Obviously, Nyx doesn't like this super secret plan and gets even more mad, and that's when Ethan says that they can probably do this mission without her, and that's when the gang splits up. So we entered the third stratum alone, but Kit was following us and thankfully caught up to me because she has to tell me something. But obviously, we already know what happened. She just wanted to notify me of my sister. And after telling her about the argument, she knows that we're alone, and she wants to keep me company. So we'll be traveling with Kit from now on. We also cut to Ethan and Olympia, and she isn't happy with Ethan's reaction, and she wants him to apologize, but he doesn't want to waste any more time because his mother has disappeared, now Amy, there might be other victims, so they need to act fast. This third stratum is actually an active volcano, so really dangerous for kids like us, but we did end up running into a room with only shiny Pokemon. I captured a couple here, but unfortunately we're not going to be able to use them, and we're going to have to trade them away. On top of that, I started fighting some random trainers and their entire teams were shinies as well. I don't know if this is intended or if this was a bug, but it didn't really feel intended, so I was very confused. However, I still knocked out all the sparkly creatures and found some ore in a wall that I started mining. These seem to be all around the maze, however, and you can get water stones and useful items from here that you can sell to shops for money. Shortly after, we run into the third stratum's base, and Brody and the professor are here too. Brody is giving them the directions to the captain, but the professor can't really understand his accent too well. They head off and Brody gets really mad at me for splitting off with Olympia. We tell him to calm down because he doesn't know what's going on between us and ask him what he's doing here and apparently he's here to bring some supplies. As from now on, he'll be working for the guild to atone for his sins. Anyway, he orders me to go and make up with Olympia, so that's what we're going to try and do. But first we check out the camp and there is a mini game here. You have to guess where the Diglett is going to pop up from and if you guess right, you get a free nugget. It. I guess not free really because you have to pay a fee in order to play, but it's still a nice little minigame if you want to earn some extra money. Or just get a gambling addiction like I did. There's also a room where you can pick berries, which doesn't really make sense to me because we're inside of a volcano, but I'm going to stock up here and not ask too many questions. I evolve Charmeleon into Charizard and Kadabra into Alakazam straight after to buff up the team a bit, and then we run into the professor talking to the captain of this Stratton. They're talking about this ancient stone tablet which has other writings in it, and it's connected to different tablets which also have these writings. They say that people from the old past used this stratum in particular to sacrifice their souls to something. And 
the only thing they knew about this something is that it's probably a deity, which means that they might be running some kind of cult. That's when they stop talking because I, the new challenger, have arrived and we need to defeat the next captain, Manu, whose design kind of reminds me of Malo from Sun and Moon a little bit. Before we take her on, Kid has a message for her from Rocky, which probably has to do with the earthquake. So after the introductions, they go on to talk and we check out the tablet. Even though it's written in an alphabet we've never seen before, we can somehow read it and understand what it's saying. And it states, To thee we offer our service, O grantor of knowledge. To thee we offer our spirit, O grantor of energy. And the damaged part that Manu couldn't make out says, May our offer free thee from thy prison and return thy original splendor. May the children of the holy tree perish beneath thy magnificence. And then all of a sudden, my head starts hurting really badly and Kit tries to keep me conscious, but it doesn't work and I seem to get some kind of vision in my head. We get greeted by this weird entity that looks kind of like an alien, I guess, which asks, Good morning. Do you have a good sleep? I ask what it is, what it's doing here, and what's going to happen now. But it also seems to have woken up next to me at the same time and doesn't know what's going on either. I introduce myself to it, and its name also turns out to be Nyx. That's when Kit wakes us up, and the last words it says is, I'm sure we will meet again in the future. A very strange encounter, but I am looking forward to what this leads into. Anyway, Manu and Kit were super worried about me, but gloss over it pretty quickly, like suspiciously quickly, because Manu immediately immediately says, You're here for a challenge, aren't you? I'll wait for you further ahead. Come when you're ready. So we zoom after her like Lightning McQueen trying to win a piston cup. But before challenging us, she asks me why I joined the guild in the first place. Because the boy that challenged her before, Ethan, is doing it because he wants to become stronger and protect his loved ones. And Olympia is doing it because she's trying to find a place in the world where she fits in. And Nyx was doing it in the first place to follow in her sister's footsteps, but now it's like a boy's is pulling pulling her towards the labyrinth, like it's sort of her destiny to try and get to the end and discover all the secrets. Manu thinks this translates into me not having enough drive, I need a clear goal, otherwise I won't get far. And this is honestly the same as in real life. But she hopes that I can find my goal in this battle that we're about to start. So the only thing we can do is try. She has a very strong sun team, starting out with Ninetales and Leafeon, but this also strengthens my Charizard. So we scorch it and Rose Raid with Flame thrower, while Jinx extinguishes Ninetales with Scald. Hisuian, Typhlosion, and Sableye come out, and with a mystical fire, my Jinx also gets burned and sent to the Shadow Realm. I bring in Ursaring, then Flamethrower the Sableye twice, and the last Pokemon she brings in is Entei. Together, they take out Charizard, so I have to bring in Alakazam, but he doesn't stand a chance against these two. Ursaring, however, is able to take out Typhlosion with a Night Slash, so I bring in Illumise, and once I hit a couple more Psychics, Entei finally falls too. Unfortunately, this battle didn't give me the answer, but I do want to make peace with Olympia and Ethan, so we should go and meet up with them instead. They should still be in the third stratum, so we might be able to catch up to them if we run really fast. Kid is also going to accompany me, but just when we're about to leave, we cut to the fourth stratum, where we see Rocky and Karen talking to each other. They're on their way to the underground city because they want to ask Frey some questions about the disappearance of my sister. We end up running into Ethan and Olympia, just like we expected, and shout out their names. But Ethan answers stone cold, I thought I was clear. Why are you even here? I thought that this was over. But Kit jumps in and talks him down, because that's no way to talk to a friend. Olympia also says that we have to make up, so he apologizes for calling me obnoxious, and for not telling me what's going on, but once we get out of this stratum, he will tell me everything. But only if we're strong enough to handle the truth, and he's going to measure that by battling me. So let's show him what we got in store. They start off with a strong duo of Raichu and Breloom, and set up a light screen which causes causes both of them to survive a Scald and a Flamethrower and counter back with a Thunderbolt to take out my Charizard first turn. I bring in Illumise, psyching the Breloom out of here and also Scald the Raichu one more time while Blastoise comes in. They smack around my bug really easily, so I bring in Alakazam instead, and while Jinx takes out Arcanine with two more Scalds, my Psychics aren't hitting Blastoise because of the Protect usage. He then takes out my Jinx with his Tauros and I bring in Ursaring. To get her with Alakazam, I Psychic and Slash it until he goes down and he brings in his last Pokemon Kecleon. I wish it was smooth sailing from here, but they are a sphere my Ursaring, so I have to bring out my last Pokemon Pikachu too. I take out the Kecleon with Psychic and 
Blastoise falls shortly after to my electric rodent, and that means we have passed the test with flying colors. Then in a flash, Olympia suddenly disappears and a weird alien guy shows up and says greetings prince to Ethan, and he tells him to give him the medallion that he lost before. Ethan says that he doesn't know anything about a medallion, but the weird creature then says he's going to attack Kit, and that's when Ethan transforms into this other form and he calls himself the Prince of Yggdras. The alien finally introduces himself as Kozuki, the Abyssal General. Ethan knows he can't beat this guy because he's way too strong, so he orders Olympia to go into assault mode. She was punched all the way through that wall there and comes out like nothing happened but in this very menacing robot form that's ready to tear this guy to shreds. They start fighting and we ask Ethan what's going on, but there's no time for explanations and they need our help. Just when we're about to jump in, a hooded entity shows up and starts taking on Ethan while Kozuki is going to deal with me in a Pokemon battle. Let's show these guys that if they want to take over the Earth Tree, they're going to have to go through us first. Their Hariyama and Ursaring waste their first turn setting up Helping Hands and Belly Drums, so we take them out with Flamethrowers, Scalds, and Air Cutters. Annihilab and Walrein come in. So once again, we Air Cutter, a Scald, and use Giga Drain until they are both down. I wish it was different for Gramble and Slowking, but Flamethrower, Scald, Giga drain, that's all we need. With Kozuki defeated, we see that Ethan and Olympia manage to defeat the other entity as well. Before we find out who it is, they manage to flee the scene without us knowing where they went. We ask Ethan for some explanations because obviously we have no idea what just happened and we need answers, but then we get another one of those visions from before. It's the other Nyx once again, who now looks awfully similar to Kozuki. As it turns out, these meetings of ours are triggered by certain events, namely the words Yggdra and Abyssal, as we read both of these terms on the stone tablet. And this time, the events that unfolded before us were of the same kind of origin. But we still don't know why it's coming into my mind once these things have been said or read. One last thing is that Nyx seems to know this Kozuki guy from somewhere because he recognizes his face, but can't seem to remember from where. That's when we get woken up by Brody, who's once again simping for Olympia. Kid was once again super worried about me as she starts crying crying, but we seem to be fully alright now. Once Brody and Kit make sure I'm not going to collapse anymore, they decide to leave us alone with Olympia and Ethan again. So we head to the fourth stratum together because that's where we will get all of our answers. They tell me they're going to take me to Etria, which is their hometown. Once we get there, everything will become clear. We arrive at this rock formation and Ethan asks Olympia to scan the area for human contact, but there is nobody in a 300 meter radius. That means it's safe enough for us to enter. There home village Etria, where we get greeted by a guy with glasses, while Ethan briefs him from everything that happened with the Abyssal attack. He introduces himself to me as well as the intelligent and magnificent Silva. That's definitely a way to humble yourself, and he also doesn't have time to explain everything to me, so instead he's going to bring me to the king who can then explain everything to me himself. On our way there, Ethan tells us about the time where he met my sister. As it turns out, he tried to sneak away from this place, and while he was in the lab some Pokemon attacked him and that's when Amy showed up and saved him. And as a reward, Ethan brought Amy to Etria to reward her. And his father, the king, got very mad for this because number one, he escaped, and number one, he took an outsider to this forbidden land. But after meeting Amy, his father was really relieved that she, in particular, saved him. And so they provided her with all the secrets of the Yggdrasil and the Labyrinth while she provided them with information and technology. And she's also the one who taught him and Olympia how to be Pokemon trainers. And all of this is why my sister was never home and told me nothing about these two because she had to keep this sacred world a secret. And why at this time does she want to involve me in all of this? Well, Ethan's father, Ramon, might know the answer. So let's go talk to him. He tells me to come forth. My sister told him a lot about me, which is a great thing to hear. And he's going to try and answer all the questions I have. An even better thing to hear. Millions of years ago, there was a powerful sentient being capable of creating life from nothing. This entity was called the Yggdrasil. In appearance, she was feminine, graceful, and compassionate. She managed the cosmos and protected it from any danger, and she was to many people a real goddess. However, one day the peace was disturbed and one of the planets she was managing was suddenly out of life. A couple of days later, it happened again to another planet. As it turns out, an abominable being was traversing space, feasting on everything that had life, and this entity was called the Abyssal God. And its 
power was almost on par with the one of the Yggdrasil. So she stood up to it and they fought for millennia up until the Abyssal God was wounded and fell onto a small blue planet. And the Yggdrasil followed it and imprisoned it in the depths of the earth while shaping her body into a gigantic tree and digging tunnels with her roots. This means that the labyrinth is alive and itself isn't more than an immense prison meant to keep this abyssal god at bay. The people that live here are the descendants of the Yggdrasil, and the abyssals are obviously the kin of the god of the depths, created to move war against them. They thought they were sealed away to put an end to the war, but recently they have been showing up again, as some of them managed to escape and they are now plotting a revenge strategy to get their god back. Unfortunately, the queen is already fallen to them, and with everything that's been unraveled recently, he thinks the mausoleum has been violated. So in order to fight them off once more, they need as much help as they can get. But for now, my mind is only focused on one thing and that's my sister, so I don't want to help them out yet until I have every answer I need and I know that my sister is either safe or not. The king respects my wishes and if we do decide to want to help them out later, we can always come back. After this, Ethan asks me how I'm doing and honestly, my head is about to explode. I have even more questions. There is aliens now, other worlds, an entire spacing god thing I knew nothing about? I'm absolutely flabbergasted at this point. So we're going to have to let that digest and head over to Silva because he wants to talk to us. He asked me for a favor, he wants me to battle Olympia because he needs to collect data on her to see how she evolved throughout her journey. So you comply and take on our metallic friend. She now has a scissor and a porygon too. I sculpt the scissor turn 1 and manage to burn it which allows me to take it out the turn after. I psychic the porygon too with Elumise 2 times 2 until Swampert comes in and takes out my Jinx. I bring in Alakazam, take out the Porygon 2 while Swampert protects itself. Magmortar is the next one out. Two more Psychics and it does go down while we also hit a Giga Drain on the Swampert but we also manage to take a Rock Slide to the face, bringing both of our Pokemon to about half HP. Mawa comes in, I hit a not very effective Psychic and get taken out by Iron Head so I have to swap in Pikachu. Swampert once again protects but next turn I can take it out with a Giga Drain and dig with Pikachu. The last thing on our team is an Alakazam while Illumina Mize also gets crunched one more time, giving Alakazam the opportunity to outspeed and take it out to turn after. So I have to bring in Ursaring, I Night Slash the Alakazam, dig the Mawile, and win this battle, no problemo. He seems pretty happy with Olympia's progress, but she still needs a checkup. In the meantime, Ethan is going to the graveyard to talk to his mother. This piqued our interest, so we're going to follow him silently and spy on him while he does so. But obviously, we first have to do some wonder trading, the main point of this video, which I guess has kind of taken a back seat because the story is actually really peak. Anyway, we managed to get a Totodile, an Electrike, Doduo, and Trico, so we evolve all of them to their final forms, giving our team a huge needed power increase. Then we go to the graveyard and all of a sudden, the other Nyx shows up, like it teleports out of nowhere. But as it turns, I'm the only person that can see her. She thinks that our bond became even more stable after we entered Etria, so from now on we can talk in real life. But that's when I go on to say, give me one reason to talk to an abyssal after what I've just heard. So Nick says that the story that the king told is incomplete, but we don't believe her and she honestly doesn't even blame us. We just need to be on our guard, that's all. She disappears again and we go find Ethan, who's telling his mother that he's become stronger and has been making more friends. He even tells everything about me, how I'm stubborn but still kind-hearted and very skilled in everything that I do. He also doesn't know why his mother gave him the medallion that's so important. Why didn't she give it to his dad instead? But he doesn't need to get into his head like that. He says he's going to leave and that he'll be back as soon as he can. He runs into me and it's a little bit awkward, but obviously we appreciated everything that he said. Before we can really get into this conversation, Olympia shows up, who says that all the preparations are done and we should be ready to leave. So let's head over to the captain of the fourth stratum. On our way there, we have to complete a couple of puzzles, which was honestly not too hard, and eventually we reach the deepest part of the fourth stratum and run into the captain. At first, he doesn't really seem to answer our questions, he's just in his own head looking at this waterfall. Eventually, he notices us, but once again, just turns his back to us once he answers. And that's when Ethan says, leave this up to me. He goes up to this blue-haired man and is like, we need to find the fourth captain so that we can get to the next stratum 
And the captain just says, who? So Ethan asks, who, what, what do you mean? And he says, who asked? That's one of the biggest burns I think I've ever seen. So Ethan retreats and Olympia goes up, but he just calls her a calculator to which he gets really mad and threatens to destroy his phone. That's when we finally get his attention. He is indeed a captain of this level and he's going to take on Olympia first to which he immediately just bites the dust. Which means it's now our turn to take on Cassian. He leads off with a Politoed and a Ludicolo, so Ilomizi and Jinx make quick work of them with bug buzzes and giga drains while taking minimal damage. The next two are Kabutops and Suicune, but the Kabutops manages to outspeed me and one-shot my Jinx with a Leech Life, but I counter back with a Giga Drain from Ilomize to trade. I also bring in Sceptile while he brings in Kingdra. The Kingdra starts setting up with Dragon Dances and this can get pretty scary, so I double up on it with Seed Bombs and Psychics two turns in a row until it goes down and the last Pokemon Raichu then hits the field. Suicune is luckily just using Mirror Coats on Thin Air, so we don't have to worry about it too much. If this was Mega Suicune from the Pokemon's Universe video, I just made, which you should check out by the way, we might have actually been in grave trouble. We first take out Raichu with Seed Bombs and Psychics, then move over to Suicune to once again take it out with Seed Bombs and Giga Drains this time. I know, groundbreaking knowledge, right? With that, we have defeated the fourth, which means we can move over to the fifth Stratum. Ethan defeats Cassian as well, and then we leave him alone, but he also gets a text from Manu saying that he needs to come to the underground city because his help is needed there. So he follows in our footsteps because that's also where we're heading, and with a little bit of searching, we make it there ourselves. This turned out to be the old city of Ethan, before the Abyssals attacked them. On top of that, this was also the capital, and it's a little bit depressing to see it like this. That's when we cut to Vizil and Manu, who are talking about all the adventurers that are missing, because apparently the city was overflowing with them, and now they're just all gone. All the guild staff is gone too, and there is no sign of Frey either. Unfortunately, there is also radio silence from Rocky and Karen, who were investigating all of the these matters. Then it cuts back to me and it's time for us to explore this underground city some more. We head to the infirmary together where we can heal up our Pokemon, but there's nobody here, so we tell Olympia to scan the area and there is zero presence of other humans here. Then a weird glowing light comes from the east of the building, so we have to go and check it out. We see Frey fighting Rocky and he says it's nothing personal because he's just following his lord's orders and Rocky seems to be in his way, so he makes him disappear. And Manu is up next as he's also threatening her, so we have to jump in and save her. Just when he's about to kill Manu as well, Olympia jumps in and attacks Frey. We join her as well and Frey says, Hello Nyx, it's been a long time. To which she doesn't answer. That's when he says, Obviously you're not much of a talker, with the disappearance of your sister and all. That's when I finally get mad and say, Where's my sister? What did you do to her? He says I can join her if I want and then pulls off his mask and obviously he turns out to be an abyssal himself. So Ethan does the same, but Manu doesn't really know what's going on. Obviously, we're going to explain everything to her if we get out of this situation alive. Frey realizes that he's outnumbered, so he calls both of his friends Kozuki and a hooded being by his side to help him out. I say that I'm going to take on Frey, but then Frey says that there is somebody else that would like to take me on instead, and that's their majesty, the hooded being. She takes off her robes and says, hello there, little sister. It's Amy, and she's been reborn as an abyssal, all because of the abyssal god himself. She also seems to have totally lost the plot and straight up attacks me with her Flutter Mane and Farigariff. I immediately swap out into Charizard and hit a Hydro Pump on the Farigariff. Farigariff then also swaps out into Milotic as I then hit a Flamethrower on Flutter Mane also burning it in the process. Power Gem takes me out but Giga Drain also manages to take care of the Milotic so I send in Sceptile to take out the opposing Flutter Mane with Seed Bomb and the incoming Blaziken immediately falls to another Skull. The incoming Crobat Brave Birds me and and Sceptile falls. But I counter back with the Hydro Pump and because of the rain we can manage to one-shot the Crobat too. I bring in Alakazam as well and once again with one more Hydro Pump we take out Electivire that just came in and the Psychic hits Farigaraf, then one more hit from Jinx and the Farigaraf also goes down. We have defeated our sister and proved that we are indeed way stronger than the Abyssals. But after the battle I still go on to shout what did you do to her Frey? But being an Abyssal Princess seems to have always been in the cards for my my sister. She's the daughter of King Darius, and it's pretty clear that I'm obviously the second princess of the Abyssals, hence why we've been seeing that other Nyx in our visions. But somehow along the way, we've both become human and lost all of our memories. We try to shake Amy's memory by trying to let her remember all the time that we spent together, and the Abyssal loses control for a moment. So they order Kozuki to take her away before she actually loses
loses the full control and becomes the real Amy again. Free is the only one remaining and he explains that they took all of the adventurers here and are going to feed them to the god of the abyssals, except for the strong ones who they might use for different purposes. And just when we're about to grab him, he manages to escape once again. Kid and Cassian come along as well, but they're a little bit late, so we fill all three of our friends in with everything that happened and all the lore about the abyssals and the Yggdrasil. Just like us, they can't really fathom everything, so it will probably take some time before it gets through their skull that we're in real danger here. There's still a couple of things we don't understand, like the situation between me and Amy and where all of the other captains have been taken. That's when Kit comes in and says that she installed chips in the captain's trainer cards so that they can track them anywhere. And after clicking a button, she sees that they're in the sixth stratum, so we have to go after them. Kit and Cassian lead the way and we stay behind with Manu a little bit longer because we have to tell her why we are challenging this labyrinth. And it's because I want to save my sister and shed light on my forgotten past. Manu tells me to never forget this feeling because it's going to help me out in even the direst situations. And that's when she goes on to follow the other two to the fifth stratum. Despite me being an abyssal, Ethan and Olympia still trust me 100% but Ethan feels like there's something his father wasn't telling me and then a weird white light sheds upon us and says that we have to meet it at the ceremonial chamber to uncover more answers. But we have to be quick because the Abyssal's power only grows stronger by the minute. So we squad up and head to the middle of the city and find the ceremonial chamber. But nobody seems to be here, even Olympia scans the area and sees no signs of a presence. The voice starts talking to us again and all of a sudden it appears. And here we see the beginning of all life, the protector of the cosmos, the Yggdrasil in all of her glory. She calls me the princess of the depths and after telling her my name, she says that my family's fate is a troubled one as is my past. As it turns out, my father, Darius, the god of the abyssals, is the one that sealed away his own people, not the Yggdrasil at all. How is this even possible, Ethan asks, and well, it's because Darius had left the abyssal kingdom before he was crowned to seek answers to all of his questions. He blended himself among the humans and learned their customs and habits, and realized how beautiful the world he was living in was. And with sad truth, he confirmed his doubts about the Abyssal God. Though it was the creator of its seed, it was but an unclear and manipulative creature who would prolong its lifespan by stealing it from others. And this situation was unacceptable to my father. He returned back to the kingdom and Darius succeeded his father and tried to change the outcome of the war. He told his people the truth and convinced them to follow on his quest to bring peace. But Ethan seems to have a lot of questions because he doesn't understand why the story was first manipulated in this way and how can Darius really be my father and why can't I remember anything of it. As it turns out, this was the will of King Darius and the previous wielder of the medallion, Helen, which is Ethan's mother. They together devised a plan to defeat the evil god. And to do this, two things were needed. A royal royal Yggdra capable of controlling the medallion and a royal abyssal. Their combined energy when put independent could defeat the abyssal one, but unfortunately something went wrong because Helen ended up dying. And unfortunately King Ramon was unable to use the medallion and the prince, which is Ethan, was too young. So the task was postponed and entrusted to the new generation, which is us. And that's why King Darius kept us a secret and put us in the care of the Yggdras until it was time to accomplish this plan. After that he was sealed together with the other abyssals in a temple in the 8th stratum. Shortly before his imprisonment, he asked her, his worst enemy, one last wish. Rewrite the memories of the Yggdras and reborn my daughters into human beings. Because I want them to live a normal and happy life, waiting for their destiny to be fulfilled. So the memories were erased from everyone except for King Ramon. This was done to prevent information from falling into the enemy's hands. So me and my sister are half human, half abyssal, and though my power is still dormant, I am not ready to face the abyssal god yet. Unfortunately, she can't help me physically, but she does ask us to reach the 8th stratum and seal the abyssals once again, otherwise everything I know may cease to exist. She'll be watching us from above and then says goodbye to the children of chaos. It finally starts to click in mine and Ethan's heads, but it's basically us three against an entire army. But Olympia then says that we are not alone. We have so many people that we met along our journey that can 
help us. In fact, a couple of them are helping us out right now, so we can't give up. And there must be a reason to why we made it this far already. And if we can somehow convince the captain of the second half of the labyrinth to fight with us as well, we might be in a very good spot. On top of that, we still have to find Vizzle, Karen, and Rocky so they can join us too. So even though we're a little bit broken right now, we still have to keep going. So we start heading to the fifth stratum, but unfortunately, our way gets blocked here by a fellow adventurer who says that this is the end of the beta of Pokemon Odyssey. So for now, we'll have to put our fight against the Abyssals on hold. But once the next update comes, they better be ready for a fight. And I hope you are too, because I am super excited for the second part here. It's probably going to take some time before it releases, definitely a couple of months away, if not longer. But I am really enjoying this story. It goes super deep, and it's branching off from regular Pokemon stories so much that I am in need to see more of it. I really like the characters as well. The humor is great. And I think the dungeon crawling aspect and the different levels to the game also really add to the story more. The further you get, the more dangerous it gets and the more tension starts building up. Yes, the moments in between the storytelling are a little bit dull in my opinion, but do keep in mind that this is still a beta and they can fix everything with the full release. For a beta, I'm going to give Pokemon Odyssey an 8.5 out of 10. Really good, would absolutely recommend for you to try it out yourself. But for now, we're going to thank our membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so, yourself you can click the links in the description it is always appreciated but not needed and as always people don't forget to leave a like subscribe and share this video with your friends i'm zwigo and i'll see you all next time